Hello guys, welcome to Wisdom Trainings. This is Abhishek. In this video, we're going to learn about Chrome Developer Tools. So the first question in your mind would be, say, what are Chrome Developer Tools, right? And the next thing would be how to open them, right? So what are Chrome Developer Tools? Right now, these are something which allow us to say um, learn about the request, the page, what are the contents, and a lot of things. Right? The question is how to open Chrome Developer Tools. Now, there are different ways of opening Chrome Developer Tools. First, you need to have a Chrome installed. So, I have this instance installed in my system. Now, to open Chrome Developer Tools, there are three different ways. Let us just first discuss about the first way that is say the basic one that is control plus shift plus i right you can open with this particular way as well right secondly if you if you're not able to open it with this you can simply hit f12 key now what happens is that one of the ways are usually disabled by the say developers on the pages so that no one can analyze the pages so you can use one of these two methods. There are two different methods as well. I'll, con I'll uh, say consider them as one method. That is, say on the page, if you right click, you can see that there is an option of inspect. You can click on inspect and a developer tool window would open. The same would work over here as well. That is, say if you click on this uh, three dots, click here, then go to more tools and then open this developer tools. Right. Now, you can see that this is open you can work with it right so coming back to this now the thing is say I have opened developer tools it it is showing to me something like this now if you're uh, if you're not able to see this kind of window no need to worry about it see it has uh, three to five different uh, ways right and you can see that this is one of the ways you can dock it to left you can dock it to the bottom of the screen or you can dock it to the right of the screen. So there are four different ways you can keep the Chrome developer tools open. Now, one of these is a separate window so that you can see the page properly. Okay. Now, Chrome develop uh, developer tools is very vast. There are a lot of things that you can use. But basically, in terms of JMeter, we would be dealing with network only and sometimes with elements tab only. Right, so there are two different things. So elements tab is the basic tab, the default tab which opens, which shows us a lot of things regarding the page. It shows us the, say, the, in the code of the um, page, that is HTML code of the page, right? We deal with it, but not usually. We deal it with it whenever we need to extract some content from the page, or say we need to verify some content on the page. Right. For example, I would need to extract some data. What data? Say there is Gmail written. Right. I can click over here and I can retrieve it. Right. This is a very rare scenario that we would be retrieving data. But yes, we may need to retrieve data. So we can highlight this element. We can retrieve its X path or we can generate a regular expression to extract the data. That is a different thing. Right. We'll be discussing these uh, about these things in the course itself and you can uh, you'll be learning about that as well now coming back to this now we have a network tab which we usually use we, which we generally use right so majority of the time we would be using this network tab now what is the benefit of this network tab and what are the things that we're going to use so you can see this thing now everything is empty here now the thing is that if i request some page for example redif dot com i hit enter and you can see that there are some series of requests going on right so the thing is that here the things are getting recorded whatever requests i'm generating they are getting recorded over here right so so we have these requests now what we can do with these is we can analyze the results right what results and what things we need to analyze see whenever we are working with the request there are few things that we need to keep in mind for example we need to know the user say requested url 
now we need to divide it into two parts what are those parts let us just see so here the two parts are these first one is this okay just a second and here yeah so the first part is this the second part is this right so i think so you're not able to see this color so let me just make use of black color that would be better and yeah so these two things okay now what is the significance of first part this is the protocol right i'll just jot it down here part one protocol it is very important to specify the protocol it may be http it may be https it depends on the page being requested right secondly part 2 and we call it server name now there are multiple parts after this request as well but right now or this particular request consists of only two parts that is the protocol and the server name right now over here there are other things as well for example what is the request method what is the status code now if you notice something the request method is uh, this that is get the status code is 301 this is telling us that the request has been um, the page has been moved permanently now whenever there is a get request right this means that we are send uh, we are just sending the plain text data and we are just sending in the request simply right now over here if there is 301 this means that the page has been moved we need to move to the next request now so this is the request which has the status code 200 status code 200 means the page is okay and it is successful right so over here the request url has changed a bit that is the protocol has changed from http to https the server name is okay right the request method is get again but if you notice something the status code has changed now this is the request that we need and this is a request that we need to work with right over here there are other things as well for example the request headers Re uh, i'll come back to response headers in some time but first let us just discuss about request headers whenever we send a request to the web page web server right we send some data with it for example the user agent so this line tells the server that the user agent that I'm using is this that is Mozilla 5.0 5 .0 based right and it is actually Chrome version 80.0.3987.132 right so no need to worry about this that Mozilla 5.0 is written or Apple WebKit is written no need to worry about this right simply go with this particular part that is this this tells you about the version of Chrome you're using right so over here there are other things as well for example cookie now these things would be discussed uh, when when we would be working with say cookie manager which is config elements right coming back to this now this is one of the requests now suppose you're done working with the request you you're done ga gathering information about the request say you would want to flush out the data that you already have right by default the data flushes out automatically for example if i click on redf mail right so if i'm clicking on redf mail you can see that new set of requests got generated and there is a page login.cgi right which is getting requested now what happens is that sometimes you would need to record something and it flushes out it happens a lot of times for example i'll go back right redf mail and say uh, I, I want to click on this particular part right there are some requests now i don't want to lose these requests so there is an option of preserve log by default it is unchecked in my system earlier it was checked so i unchecked it before sending in the request now i've chosen this option what it would affect is now if i click on the page if i click on redf mail the requests would get generated but they are coming after the last set of requests right so we, we're getting to know that what was the last requ request as well sometimes what happens is that the request get vanished now in this case it won't get vanished right now this is a url right as i told you earlier 
there are multiple parts of url for example this url this can be divided into three parts what are those parts let us just see so this is a url right and i'll keep it here now i would be dividing it into three parts what are those parts let us see first is the main part and this is the first part second is this part right till this particular point third is after the forward slash so there are three different parts let me just start down these part names part one part two part three right you are already aware of part one and part two the third part is the say path right this is the path okay so this means that whenever you are working with the request you may need to specify the path as well you cannot avoid it right now there is one more thing that i would want to discuss for example say you go to this particular page that is google.com right and here you search for something for example apache jmeter right so i'm looking up for something right now and you can see that there are some series of requests okay there are a lot of requests now i won't be able to understand which request i generated so simply uncheck preserve log flush out the results from this clear button and then go back to page and then regenerate the request so over here the request is this that is question mark q equals to apache plus j meter right now over here we have got this request that is this right this is the url i'll copy this url and i'll paste it here now this url is not having one part or two parts or three parts actually it is having four different parts right we can divide it into four different parts what are those parts first part is this https second part is this google.com third part is this that is search do not include question mark fourth part is q equals to apache plus j meter so there are four different parts now what is the fourth part right i won't be discussing about first three parts the fourth part is the say request parameters now here we send the data that we would want to provide to the server server can process the data accordingly right but these are the request parameters and to be specific these are the request parameters for get request okay so this is how you can use chrome developer tools this is how you can manage it now there is one more thing suppose you don't want to see these images you can filter out these as well for example if you choose the option data or you can say the document now this is only showing me the search part right it is not showing me the unnecessary things for example the js part the css the images the media it is simply skipping of those things for us because we just want to work with the request right we don't want other things now over here if we notice something in the request headers right we are sending in some information we are sending in the cookie as well we don't have to send this cookie directly but yes we can provide this information the most impo important information that we need to send with the request is this right so you you need to know about what kind of user agent you are using sometimes what happens is that the websites do not allow you to work with the web page if the user agent is not provided right so this is how you can open chrome developer tools this is how you can uh, analyze the pages on chrome and this is how you can analyze the requests right thank you thanks for watching this video guys please don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so that you can you'll be updated all the time thank you